What is Boku no Natsuyasumi? Well, Boku no Natsuyasumi is a game that's about the experience of going to your grandma's house, your grandpa's house in the countryside in Japan. In Japan, this is a kind of cultural experience that most children have where generally the younger family might move closer to the city, but you might have your, your grandparents or your, your, your family who live in the countryside. Well, this game has you experience that from the perspective of a child. So this game is based around a boy called Boku. He's a nine-year-old boy and he's sent to go visit his aunt and uncle in the countryside. Now this game is actually based around an actual countryside in the Yamanashi prefecture. So it kind of has this imagery of really beautiful Japan. And for me, this is the Japan I love, right? The, the inaka, the countryside, the Japanese traditional house, Japanese traditional everything, right? Just absolutely beautiful. And this really perfectly captures that there's a romantic feeling about the Japanese countryside. This game perfectly captures that, but it's also an incredibly useful game for your Japanese study. And so in this game, you live out a month in the life of this boy. In this month, you experience a whole range of different settings and uses of language. So you get to experience just daily conversation, whether at, you know, the, the lunch table or the dinner table or going out into the farm or just having conversations with kids or talking about things like you know your life and school and things like that it's such a normal life game which is actually really rare in you know video games to actually have just something that is really just mundane boring old life but it's just so perfectly set in this beautiful countryside that it just gives you this perfect package to enjoy Japanese with what kind of people will this game appeal to well, if you are interested in Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese language, Japanese tradition, Japanese society, anything at all to do with really Japan, then this game is going to be appealing to you. Why? Because it has everything there. It has the, the dinner table talks where you talk with your family. It has the cute little conversations where you're talking about, you know, going for a walk to the river and catching fish. It has all of the normal day conversation that you would have. Hello, good morning, saying, you know, at the end of the day, Otsukare sama, and you have, you know, when you have, uh, you know, uh, food, you say, Gosho sama deshita, you know, and, and all of these really normal everyday life expressions. Uh, that you can see. If you're interested in learning about Japanese culture and society, this is the game for you. What kind of language will you learn with this game? Well, this game has a lot of voiced dialogue, so you actually get to learn how to actually have a conversation with someone in Japanese, how to ask questions and respond. Um, you also have a lot of kind of standard greetings, like for example, at the end of the day, language that you use to greet, when you're about to start eating, language that you use to eat, when you finished eating, language you use, when you greet someone, when you see someone, right, for the first time in the day, how you finish having conversations with someone once you stop, you know, talking with that person. You, you learn how to actually, you know, talk in a more natural setting. You get to learn language about food as not only at the end of every day do you all have dinner together and you know kind of sometimes you actually talk about the food that you eat or the food that you want to eat but if you actually talk with the mother she will actually give you a kind of summary of all of the food that she cooked for you that day so if you want you even get a little chance to learn some uh, Japanese words for food that is often eaten and maybe you could search that up later and actually you know learn some recipes that are you know authentic Japanese recipes. You get to learn a little bit about Japanese religion because actually originally the reason why people go to the countryside to see their grandparents isn't just for fun, it's often because of this is the period in Japanese uh, society that is known as Obon and this is where you actually visit your family grave. So traditionally people's family grave is often in the countryside. It's not usually in the actual city. And so during this time in summer, uh, once a year, people will actually go back to their country home, back to the Inaka, and they will visit the kind of original family grave where, you know, their ancestors are buried. And this is that 
kind of excuse to go to the countryside during summer where it's really hot. And this is actually why people go to the summer. This is why it's such a common um, trend. It's not just because people want to go visit their grandparents in summer, although that would be nice. <laughs> it's actually more because of this is where your family grave is and that's why you go and visit it. So you're also going to learn some Japanese tradition um, with, you know, actually, you know, visiting a grave and the names for graves and even just the name for some of the um you know the religious objects uh, that you might see so quite a lot of interesting language to learn. You'll learn all kinds of language about house objects, uh, normal things inside your house, and you'll also learn things about the outside garden. So you'll learn words about nature, uh, about rivers, trees, mountains, um, and even, you know, catching bugs and fish. You'll learn a lot of descriptive language as well, and also quite a lot of really natural uh, use of things like onomatopoeia um, and language that you might, might not necessarily learn in a textbook, but this game Will actually help teach you. You'll also learn how kids speak and adults speak and that kind of difference between the way that kids and adults actually speak. And I know as a as a learner of Japanese, uh, when you've learnt with a textbook, if you suddenly hear a kid talk, you might not actually understand what they're saying because they speak a little bit different to how you're expecting. Generally, uh, the closest to being like your textbook type speaker is maybe like your obachan, like the old grandma or sometimes the mum. But generally, most other people don't speak like that. They might speak a little bit differently, whereas kids might speak a little bit more cute. Husbands might speak a little bit more rough. Although in this game, the husband is quite polite. But overall, I feel like I've never come across a piece of language in this game that I felt like, what is this word? Right, I've never felt that way. Everything that I come across with language in this game, it all feels like, oh, that's definitely something that I either know or should know. It never really feels like it's like, I'm never gonna need this word. Everything that you see in this game is useful and it's just absolutely crazy how good it is compared to you know some other games where you kind of just have to put up with learning some kind of weird terms and expressions uh it's like maybe my last video where we saw quite a lot of archaic uh japanese in this game no it's all useful it's all wonderful it's all great to learn if you were a person that was kind of interested in actually moving to Japan and maybe you wanted to know the names of certain things or you know know how to talk about japanese culture this game is going to be the game for you. You're going to learn how to talk about all kinds of things like just normal life, dinner. You're going to talk about things like festivals, things like um, seeing fireflies, your know, language for that. You're going to talk about language for all kinds of things. It's You are literally in the perspective of a child and you're with a family. So it's just the perfect environment for language learning. How does the language appear? Well, the language appears in a kind of mixture of different ways. Generally, this overall story is told throughout this period of time. And when that happens, all of the lines and dialogue is all voice acted. Now, this does appear in a kind of automated voice acting. So you can't actually pause uh, the screen when you um, talk to someone. It just kind of happens automatically. You see the language up on the side of the screen, but you can't actually kind of pause it or interact with it. So maybe for some language learners, this might be a little bit challenging to kind of follow the pace. I would probably recommend actually recording yourself play so that you can actually come back and see it again. Sometimes you can speak with the characters again and they will repeat the same lines. And because it's voice acted, you can, you know, keep on trying to listen. Um, but unfortunately, this game doesn't have Furigana for all of those people who love Furigana in their game myself included, but it does have wonderful voice acting by some actually really quite famous voice actors. So it's a really, really interesting game in, in that regard. Now, the language also appears in his kind of uh, daily diary. So at the end of every day, right, because time progresses naturally, 
and the things that you do within the day kind of cause time to pass. At the end of the day, you have a kind of diary, a very cute diary where you draw some cute pictures and kind of talk about how today went. And so this is another chance for you to actually learn some language, not just in the dialogue in the game, but also a short little blurb, a short little summary of the day's adventures that you had, uh, whether it was seeing fireworks or looking at Hotaru, looking at fireflies for the first time, right? So this is another way that you see language and you also find language in obviously things like menu explanations, item explanations and things like that, which none of it is voice acted. I don't think any game has voice acting for menus, um, but that language also does exist. What's the balance between gameplay and language? Well, actually the balance here is really, really good because you pretty much play the game at your own pace. Most of the game revolves around you interacting with people and it's kind of in the middle of you interacting with people, you get to just absolutely enjoy being in these beautiful backdrops with just the most wonderful art for the PlayStation 1, right? So these beautiful countryside images and the sounds of all the nature. So you kind of feel quite immersed into Japan, really, in, with this game. But then when you choose to, right, when you go and talk to someone, you can kind of take it bit by bit and talk with someone. I often find myself kind of talking to myself when I play this game and I actually feel like I'm like, oh, hello, what are you doing? And you really want to see what people are up to every day because it kind of feels like you are actually moving to the countryside and so you want to know what's going on. You want to ask, you know, what that girl's doing where she's poking at the ground. And it's just such an interesting uh, setting for, for a video game that's quite useful for real life. So the balance is really good here where you can kind of choose your own pace. You are not going to be swamped with pages and pages and pages and pages um, of text to go through like some RPGs, but you're also not going to find yourself bored like some games where you just play, 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 play and you don't get any language. This game has a really good balance of gameplay and language. How high is the language requirement to get into this game? Well, that's where it's a little bit tricky. Because this game doesn't have any kind of foodie gana, it doesn't have any log features, so you can't rewind and check things, you really kind of have to follow the flow of the conversation as it happens, unfortunately. Now, you can pause the game um, and you can obviously record yourself and go back through that footage. And you can also, you know, speak again to the same character and hope that they say the same piece of dialogue. But that's not 100% of the time. Because of this, I would say the language requirement is fairly high, but not as high as some games uh, that are, for example, things like Metal Gear Solid, where you not only need to know quite a high level of Japanese, but you also need to know quite a lot of technical terms. In this game, most of the language that you come across is really useful for just everyday life. There really isn't any useless language in this game. And what I mean by that is often when you play a video game, you learn pieces of language that you don't really need, right? Like for Final Fantasy VII, you know, you learn Ichiban Makoro. Well, you don't need to know the Japanese word for a reactor. People barely understand what that means in English, right? So you kind of learn a whole bunch of useless language. This game doesn't really have useless language because it's set in real life. And so everything that you come across could actually in some way be useful, right? Especially if you're interested in, you know, living in the countryside and looking at bugs and catching fish and talking about cute conversations like sucking the honey out of a flower, <laughs> for example. So the language requirement based on how the language appears might be slightly high, but as far as the actual language that you need to know in order to get into the game, I don't think it's that high. I don't think you need to have a huge vocabulary knowledge. I think just you need to be quite comfortable with seeing Japanese, reading Japanese, and maybe have some way of actually reviewing the language that comes on the screen. Why is this game good for learners of Japanese? Well, I believe that this game is potentially one of the best games to learn Japanese with because of the setting right? The setting is real life. 
as real as life can get really for a video game. The only closest game that I can think of like this would be something like Persona, and that has a lot of useless language. What I mean by that is you know, RPG language, not real stuff that you would use in your day-to-day -day life in Japan. This game is day-to-day -day life in Japan, so you learn language for day-to-day -day life in Japan. It's incredibly, incredibly useful uh, for any any Japanese learner, not just people who like a certain genre. This game I would recommend for any Japanese learner. That's how good it is. And it's so charming. It's so wonderful. It feels so good playing it. I, I feel like I get to experience a childhood that I personally never even got to have. It feels nostalgic even though I'm not actually having any kind of nostalgia for anything because I didn't have this experience in the first place. So I think the game is great for learners because everything is useful. You have voice acting. It's very, very charming and interesting, and you can play it at your own pace. So it's definitely a good game for learners. What level learner is this best for? Well, I would say this game is good for people who are ready to kind of maybe take on a game that doesn't have push to continue, right? Because this game is almost like a cutscene, where the cutscenes play and then the, you can't go back, that does make me feel a little bit like complete beginners may feel a little bit intimidated by this game. So maybe if you're a little bit more of an intermediate level learner, if you're someone who's wanting to kind of maybe push yourself a little bit beyond and maybe you're okay seeing, uh, you know, cutscenes and things like that, um, then it's useful. However, if you're a complete beginner, I could still recommend this game for you. You just have to learn some tricks as to how to actually approach the language, right? You've got to learn how to pause the game. You've got to learn how to maybe record your gameplay so you can go review later. But just in the actual game, if we just take what is available in the game by itself, I would say somewhere between the N4, N3 level is probably the good starting point. If you're at N5, you might find it a bit difficult because the language might move at a quick pace. However, definitely at the N3 level, uh, this would be a good game for you. And the N4 is probably a good starting point. What kind of resources are available to help play and learn from it? Well, this game unfortunately doesn't have any game scripts online, at least from what I've been able to find. So there's no game script to use like you might with a Final Fantasy game, for example. If you were just to play the game on the PlayStation, um, there are no real resources outside that I can think of that are available to help you uh, with learning and studying this. Why do I personally recommend it? Well, this game is personally one of my favorite games uh, to learn with. It would be my pretty high number one, number two, number three, number four, number five ranking games if it had a log feature where you can go back through and replay things. However, it doesn't have that, so it's not in my kind of top five games, but it is definitely one of my personally recommended games to learn Japanese with. I absolutely love this game and I love its setting, I love its its use of language that you get to come across, so unique. So many games have so much kind of game language. This game, that whole argument goes out of the window. Everything here is worthwhile learning, everything here is generally voiced in a kind of realistic way, so it's not necessarily super anime type talking. The dad talks pretty much like a dad talks. The mum talks pretty much like a mum talks. And the girls and the boys and the young kids, they talk pretty much how children talk. So the voice acting is really, really, really good. The game is really, 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 really interesting. It's absolutely beautiful. If you have even the tiniest bit of interest in learning about Japanese culture, society, customs and traditions, then it's amazing for you. One of the best games for you. And it's just so damn adorable. <laughs> so why do I personally recommend it? Because I absolutely love this game. So I think, yes, definitely a game that you should check out, try, give a shot. Yes, um, you might need to just take it you know, at your own pace, maybe learn how to press pause or, or record the video function so you can actually help with your learning, but I 100% recommend 
uh, using this to help you with your Japanese studies. Personally, it's probably one of the highest as far as Japanese culture and society goes. How do you get this game? Well, this game is available in uh, certain platforms such as the PlayStation, the original PlayStation. Um, this game was originally released uh, on the PlayStation in 2000. So 21 years ago, oh my god. <laughs> um, this game is released then, so it's available on the PlayStation. However, I would say it's almost impossible to get unless you're in Japan. The game was also released for the PSP. Also, however, only released in Japan. This game is a Japan exclusive game. It was never released in English um, and it's only available in Japanese. However, this game is definitely worth playing. It's definitely something that I recommend uh, trying out. One thing to note, however, is actually there is a kind of spiritual sequel to this game coming out for the Nintendo Switch very 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 soon and that is Crayon Shinchan's Boku no Natsuyasumi. Now this game is actually coming out very 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 soon. It's coming out in July 15th kind of when you know summer vacation uh, begins and as this game is called Boku no Natsuyasumi my summer vacation um the the spiritual successor where the main character is now a very popular uh, children's character in japan uh crayon shinchan very very uh, kind of uh cute fun character uh, in japanese um anime and it's kind of a family character um, that's supposed to be enjoyable for both children and adults. With the manga for Crayon Shinchan technically being classified as a seinen manga, which I don't know how, but apparently it's put in the same leagues as Ghost in the Shell and Berserk as far as the rankings for for, for kind of age rankings. <laughs> but Crayon Shinchan is very much adored by children all around the world, and he's a really good fit for this Boku no Natsuyasumi world because he kind of gives personality and character to Boku, right? And now he's this famous character that people know about, but we still have the beautiful countryside. Um, so it's definitely, you know, if you're thinking about maybe, maybe you want to play Boku no Natsuyasumi, but you can't import it anywhere, maybe you don't have a PlayStation, then maybe it's worth holding out for this uh, Nintendo Switch game that's coming out. And hopefully that's a, a similar experience. It certainly looks like it's going to be quite similar uh, and only time will tell. But Crayon Shinchan is based on a kind of slice of life in the same way that you kind of see daily life. And so it's a real perfect fit uh, for, for the series. So it could be interesting. But this game I absolutely love. And so if you can find a way to play this game, import this game, uh, however it is that you can manage to play it, I highly, highly recommend that you check out Boku no Natsuyasumi for the PlayStation 1 and PSP. So, are there any games that you feel are really, really good for Japanese learners? Please leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know of some games that you would like to recommend uh, to other people learning Japanese, and maybe we might see them in a future episode. So, thank you very much everyone, I hope you enjoyed uh, this short little video where I'm introducing uh, games to learn Japanese with. I figured this might be a nice series to have on the channel, so, you know, we have ways of learning Japanese but I don't really have anything to just introduce you to you know these really cool games that are out there and there are so many interesting games uh, in Japanese that you can learn Japanese from so I've decided that I'm going to start this uh, introduction series where I show you some of my favorite games but also just some good games to learn Japanese with so I hope you enjoy this series and as always an enormous enormous thank you uh, to all of the supporters on Patreon thank you so much guys uh, for supporting the channel uh, you really are keeping everything going so thank you so much for all of your support thank you for enjoying the channel and i hope you look forward to the next video see you again next time see ya